Mr. Woodruff, you've tested positive for HIV. Have you ever used intravenous drugs? Have you ever engaged in homosexual conduct? Homo, homo. Did you say homo? You made a mistake. Mm -hmm. That ain't me. Mr. Woodruff, we estimate you have 30 days left. Newsflash, y'all. Ain't nothing out there can kill Ron Woodruff in 30 days. A lot of people have been talking about the, the career transformation that you've made over the last two years. Um, it, over the last few years, you've started in some of the best movies I've seen over the last 20 years, Mud and, uh, and, and Mud Killer Joe, yep. amazing films. From your perspective, are you becoming a better actor or are you taking roles that are better showing the skills that you already had? Good question, and I got it's honestly, it, it's honestly, I think a bit of both. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm, I'm constantly, as, any, as anybody in any career, I'm trying to, to use a golf term, lower my handicap. Right, exactly. You right. know, so I'm working, and if I'm not becoming better, if I'm not learning more, well, I need to change something. Mm -hmm. But I'm also, there are certain roles that allow you to grab a hold of something, and, and they just, as I like to say, the ceiling's higher and the floor's lower. Right. I'm grab the something like this, and, and 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 even mud. There's and even Dallas and Magic Mike and Killer Joe. There's a large. They're they're all anti heroes mm -hmm. in a way too. Right. Um, and I've been really just going for the experience, mm -hmm. for uh, sure. choosing roles for the experience, and the experience has been outstanding. Well, and I and I'm enjo I mean enjoying them. I say the experience has been outstanding. My experience has been outstanding. Right. I, Firing out of bed every morning to go to work and can't wait to go to work. Mm -hmm. Scared of what I have to do that day. Right. Loving that. Is that fear. a new sensation for you? Um, it's not new. I've had it before, mm -hmm. but I'm just having it uh, more consistently. For sure. For sure. Them drugs. They just released their testing, and I know this hospital's one of the size and need it. It doesn't work that way, Mr. Woodruff. Where are you going? They got good meds out of Mexico that's better than what you can get here in the States. Yes. Protein, totally non-toxic. And you can't buy this in the USA? Not approved. You could be making a fortune off of this. You look great. Well, actually, I look amazing. Anything to declare? Not a. They're importing illegal drugs for sale. It's a very serious offense. They're not illegal. They're merely unapproved. <laughs> So, unfortunately, obviously, uh, Ron passed away in 1992, so you didn't have the chance to to really kind of, you know, talk to him and use him to help build the character. But as an actor, is there any benefit to not having the person there to instantly go and ask questions to? Uh, I suppose it would have would have helped in ways. But I, got, I had a lot of footage where he was interviewed, a lot of tapes um, that I got from his family, mm -hmm. and I spent time with his family, mm -hmm. and I got to really look into. He had a big, thick diary where he wrote a lot, kind of kept his his finances in shape there, mm -hmm. kept his sort of dreams and hopes and frustrations in there, and and kind of saw who the man was from the inside out. What was the most interesting thing that you found amongst all those pages of stuff? Um, kind of how his language and his thought process, how he could be almost a smooth-talking smuggler and then go into these fits of rage and conspiracy theories really? and anarchic humor and blasphemic humor. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he, he, was, he, was, he was wild, but he was funny and he was witty, but he was, he was, uh, he had a real edge to him, mm -hmm. man. Had a real edge and he, and he would go play the, he would go play the part, but also how lonely the son of a gun was. Right. He was kind of wandering, looking for some purpose in life. And what, what inversely happened is getting HIV is kind of what gave him purpose. Right. Something to fight for 24-7. And given 30 days to live, he lived seven more seven years. Seven more years. It's amazing. It's amazing. I've been oh. looking for you, Lone Star. This is Tinkerbell. Unless you got more cash or new clients, I'm busy. You don't deserve our money. Cut you in. 5%. 25. Take it or leave it. Welcome to the Dallas Buyers Club. I have been showing a lot of people the trailer to this movie for the sole purpose of seeing their reaction to your performance. It ranges from wow to oh my god to even some people saying that's that's just not him. <laughs> I was wondering whose reaction to your performance were you most interested in seeing and what was their reaction? I've only had five or six reactions and yours is one of them. Oh really? Since I just started talking about the film, I haven't talked to many people that have seen it. Uh, but it's unreal. I can't believe that people are responding so enthusiastically to the film and to my performance. I'm, I'm really, I'm pretty blown away. Mm -hmm. is, so, is this the shocked moment? Shocked yeah, is well, appropriate we, to say. Well, you should be shocked because we all know how good you are, but uh, is, is this the moment when you realize that you nailed it or did you already know before? I still don't know that I nailed it. I really was just, I did everything that I could to contribute, to do the best job that I could to represent this community uh, of transgendered people. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to have created dignified 
a uh, human being and not a cliche. For sure. Uh, and I, I remained incredibly committed the entire time that we that we shot and I worked as hard as I possibly could. Uh, and those are the things that are important to me, but it's wonderful that, that people are responding so great to the well, film. Rightfully so, man, rightfully Thanks. so. Um, I feel like you can Where make Where are you from again? From Houston. Yeah. From right. Houston, so, dude, so this, you know, yeah. Dallas Connection, dude. It, sure, it, we're gonna be in Houston soon, playing later this year. Oh. Can I come? Yes, of course. Go for the 30 Seconds of Mars concert? Yes. All right. I've got, Be I can my tell guest. Them, I can tell them that I know you? You can. I will give you a ticket to bring you, your friend, whoever you want to bring. Holy crap, this is awesome. There this you go. just turned into the best interview ever. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I, I feel like you can make the argument that this is the most that you've ever changed physically for a role. I, I think so. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, from your perspective, what's the most you've, you've ever changed on the inside to get the role right? Well, I think probably this as well. I think Rayon was a, was a transformation both inside and out. It wasn't just about losing 30 pounds or wearing wigs or high heels or waxing my body. There was a big transformation that took place inside. Mm -hmm. And that, that probably it was the most important transformation. Uh, you know, I was intent on playing a real human being. I think that, you know, Hollywood's full of, of impersonations, of uh, imitations, of drag queens that are over the top and uh, uh, colorful and sometimes fun and funny. Uh, so I felt like that had been covered. For sure. And I wanted to really represent with as much dignity as I could uh, right. a real person. Are you treating these people? Uh, they're treating themselves. Well, I ain't selling drugs, I'm selling membership. Walker, Dorset, these are patients? Yes, sir. They're also the names of players on the Dallas Cowboys. That's a hell of a coincidence. I, I want to just for a second, obviously they're completely different films, but to, to kind of use a compare and contrast between this and uh, Requiem for a Dream, which yeah. is one of my all-time favorite films. Yeah. Whenever you play characters that were that kind of were plunged into that rabbit hole of, of drug usage, was one harder than the other? No, I think that you know Requiem for a Dream and Dallas Buyers Club actually uh, they're 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 appropriate to put in a in a similar place. They're both films about dreamers. They're both films about people and really challenging situations. I think Dallas Buyers Club has ultimately a lot more hope. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a film about survival. It's a film about a group of people that are determined to, to live and uh, to beat the odds. Uh, and I found that incredibly inspiring. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Ron has, and this is how I wanted to end the interview, Ron has such a great line in the movie where he says, I prefer to die with my boots on. Which mm -hmm. I thought was a cool little, especially being from Texas, it's a cool little thing. It's a great you know. line, um, right? So I was gonna, if you, if you were gonna complete that sentence, you could say, you know what, when, when, my, when my day comes, I prefer to die, how would you complete that sentence? Content. Content. Yeah. How, how, are, you, how are you feeling right now? Pretty content. As you should So be. should we just call it yeah, a day? Now we're done. The last <laughs> interview of the day. I'll see of you in my life. No, I hope not, man, dude. I hope not. Uh, we will be uh, seeing each other in Houston. You have my word on it. I appreciate it. When you come, I have a very comfortable fold out couch. How do you? I do. Wow. Well, Hotels, that, who needs you them? You get a four man grill, we're ready to go. Let's buddy. do this, man. In honor right. to sit across from you, man. Thank you so much see for your time. I will see you at Oscar time. Get, give uh, Emma your email out there. I'm going to gonna give you tickets. What the hell is it? I have a court order permitting us to confiscate any and all non-FDA approved supplements. We need a new supply. Check Amsterdam, Donna, and Israel. We can do business with you. Why are we here? Nice restaurant, beautiful woman. That's where I feel like a human again. You ain't alone. Mr. Woodruff, what is going on? People are dying. You're nothing more than a common drug dealer. TJ Strayon. Freaking homo. Oh. The physical transformation goes without saying that you make in this movie is unbelievable. But do you ever worry whenever you make that transformation that like, you know what, my performance has got to be as good as this transformation because otherwise people are just going to sit there and say, well, look how skinny no, he got. No, 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 no. I mean, the, 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 the weight and the getting skinny was, that was part of my responsibility to, right. to, to the man, to mm -hmm. the part. That wasn't that hard once I decided I was going to do it. Because if I, when I weighed, do you want to do it or do you want to get there and not be the weight? Well, I'd be embarrassed if I wasn't the weight I should be, and that's right. going to be a hell of a lot bigger hangover than how hard it is right now to get out of the weight. For sure. It's part of the fun of the job. I mean, we it, it, was it hard? Sure, but that's part of the, we weren't playing Halloween. I wasn't dressing up. Right, as the, exactly. I wasn't dressing up as the guy looking like he was that weight. And I guess I'd get down to that weight. For sure. Well, um, have something to commit to like that? It's great um, and fun. And it, and it, it, it does inform who the guy is, but basically on a level of
that's what happened. It would be a lot worse to look at it and go, that guy doesn't look like he's sick. That guy doesn't look Almost insulting. Like... Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it would be irresponsible. Man. For sure. Well, yeah. dude, you knock it out of the park, Thank man. You. It's killer. When you come through Houston, let's hang out, man. I like Houston, man. I... Hello, Houston. <laughs> Let me be your ticket home.